All right, good Thursday morning, everyone. We are following today's market action with Jim Kramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Jim, a big report today. Amazon could be testing a delivery service like Let's FedEx. Let's make this clarification. Uh, this is not a reason to sell either FedEx or UPS. This is about trying to do a little more third party. Uh, you know, when you order something from Amazon, it's not directly from Amazon, from third party. They want to try to do more of that, but they don't want to go into the delivery business. And by the way, XBO Logistics is another company you should throw in the mix for last mile. And I really feel that those who are selling FedEx do not understand the relationship. So please, this is a call. You can take some action on it, but don't go crazy. The declines in UPS, FedEx, I mean. I like FedEx more. You like FedEx more. Yeah. And you also say today is a day to watch FANG, which of course that's your acronym. Well, you know, because what I don't like is stocks that just levitate. Mm. You know, you have fa uh, Facebook in the news that's negative about Washington. I'm not that worried about that. Amazon, I mean, what's in the news? Okay, maybe they do this third party delivery. Uh, Netflix, once again, people saying the international is going higher. Alphabet is, has some sort of voice uh, activated thing where it's not really competitive against Amazon and doing some Chrome. Yeah. I, I want stocks to go up on numbers, not on emotion. I don't want hope to be the driver, and I don't want analysts throwing in the towel to be the driver. But that's really what's behind a lot of the rally. Well, yeah, I wanted to ask you about some of those new Google products. I know you're rocking your HP laptop. What'd you think of the Pixel book? You know, my HP laptop, <laughs> I'm not crazy about. No? I, want my old, I like my old one better. You've waited because, so long Well, this it. thing still has this thing pops up on the left side called Contura, and it's horrible, and I can't oh. seem to get rid of it. I don't want it popping up, and it's really bad. And I'm going to have to talk to HP. I, I, I got to get it off. I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> well, staying with tech, uh, Microsoft was upgraded by Canada. Okay, now this is again what I'm talking about. They kept waiting for the market to go down, which would then allow Microsoft to go down so they could slap a buy on it. But the market didn't go down. So they just threw in the towel and said, you got to buy it. And, and there was nothing new in it. All right, Jim, you had an incredible interview with Bill Ackman last night. He raising the issue of... Very, very cerebral. And basically what he just said is, look, it's massively underperformed what it can do. He's actually dealing within the confines of, say, a paychex versus automatic data. I've always thought that automatic data should have owned what Workday does mm -hmm. and what and what ServiceNow does, two of my favorite companies. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're not cloud-based enough, so they can't. So it's kind of like automatic data is to... Uh, these companies as uh, Oracle is to these companies. It's just, they could have owned these businesses. But but Bill correctly points out that the revenue per employee is not that great. He correctly points out that the company's a little bit bloated. Uh, he did say that when they're up against paychecks, they lose. That I can't confirm. Uh, because I had Marty Musi on the other day, the CEO, and he did not say that, but you know, these are kind of a benign duopoly, frankly. But you know, look, Ackman raises the points. He, he, give him a board seat, let him in. Uh, he can help. And Jim, you talk about Workday in the through the lens of innovation in your real money column, sort of the winners and losers under the umbrella of innovation. Well, I mean, what's happened is is that you know you get into the the brilliant disruption that Indra Nui talked about, and the need to be able to support smaller brands and larger brands, something that Procter needs to do much more of. Then you have Clorox that really is supporting smaller brands and making them into larger brands. Look at Burt's Bees, perfect example. Mm. And then you have automatic data, which didn't innovate beyond its core business. And I think it was because of its complacent. And I don't blame, they own that business. And, and you know, a lot of it was the float. When interest rates go up, automatic data will do better. Um, but that's kind of, you know, they've rested on their laurels. I think that's true. And there's no reason why they couldn't have owned what Workday does and couldn't have owned what ServiceNow does. But it wasn't in their DNA. Mm. All right, shifting gears, Jim, what did you make of uh, Constellation Brands' results? It's a pure blowout. I mean, Constellation Brands ha is responsible for all the growth in the beer category. Uh, they're responsible for most of the growth in the wine category. They're responsible for a lot of the growth in the tequila category. They didn't even talk about that. There's so much that's going right. And they talked about High West and what a success that is. This is, again, an example of a company that has taken smaller brands and blown them out. And... Uh, Look, at Bar San Miguel, the beers that we pour the most are Modelo, Corona. Those are, we only have two taps, that's all you need. And then Pacifico, and Pacifico was kind of a junk brand. And um, it, it, once again, they brought it to the United States. And I say junk brand, meaning that so when you go to actual Mexico, like we do, that's the least expensive beer, beer and we're like, uh, large charge, we can charge a premium price. The premiumization of certain spirits is the way of Rob Sands. He's brilliant. Uh, and he's going to be on Mad Money. I can't wait to talk to him. It's just pure joy to have him on the show. All right. We'll look forward to that interview tonight at 6 p.m. You. Jim, you also talked about cell gene and biogen on you CNBC. You know, this is one of those, uh, up, you know, look, a guy sits out the whole cell, gen rally, cell gene rally from the mid-teens to 145. And he sits it out. He's got his a hold. So when he gets to 145, he takes his cell. He says it's overstretched. I'll be worried about the Revlimid uh, patent. 
uh, protection beginning in 2020, but then says he's early. I, I just found it was useless. And the upgrade of Biogen, again, and useless. I mean, it's just kind of a shuffling because uh, the market took up Celgene and there was nothing you could do. We didn't have a buy on it. It would have been great if he had gone from buy to hold, but he sat at the rally and, and he's kind of like throwing in the, it's reverse tail throw versus uh, Merrill Lynch going from a sell to a buy on Sherwin-Williams, a sell and then to a buy. Did you miss it that bad? But yes, a lot of people are caving. They're caving to the market and that I don't like. Caving to the market indicates you are not in shape if these stocks go down. Mm. Could hurt the market. All right, and Jim, finally, we are following a, an important jobs report on Friday. What are you expecting? Well, I mean, the jobs reports can be totally convoluted by Florida and Texas. The Labor Department is a very poor, poor record of being able to tabulate correctly. So I don't see anything that I that is, I mean, I, look, we need a strong enough uh, number to justify a December rate hike, which is going to keep the banks going. And let's just go over the banks for a second. JP Morgan is going to offer, is going to give you some really good growth. Bank of America has the largest deposit base, so if they get a Fed rate hike, it could move things. Um, Wells Fargo ha has lost its premium multiple because of the bogus cross sell, so that can still move up. PNC got downgraded today. Why? Stretch valuation call. Again, I don't like that kind of stretch value. That's just like sticking your finger in it and say, oh, it's too high. That's not anything worth, uh, worth noting. We like Key. Key is historically going down on this stuff, but remember, Key's in a growth area in growth mode because they bought First Niagara and they're continuing to integrate it into their uh, into their operation. Beth Mooney's done a great job, so that's my feeling on the banks. I want you to watch healthcare. Why healthcare? Because we're seeing a slow move up in the Lilies, which is an action alert name, in Abbott Labs. Uh, th that and of course the biotechs is not a slow move up; it's a big move up, which is why I thought the cell gene uh, downgrade really wasn't worth a lot. Let's watch Costco. Uh, Costco's coming in hot into its quarter. It's done that twice, and then what happens is then the analysts jump on and say, you haven't seen Amazon come in yet, and the stock goes down. So be careful, Costco. That's been the, that has been the pattern. Now, can it break the pattern? Of course, anything can break the pattern, but Costco's had reported great numbers, and it hasn't gone up before. Let's watch the pattern, receive reports, great numbers, and it finally goes higher. All right, we'll watch Fang, Banks, and Healthcare today. Excellent, Jim thank Kramer, you. Kramer, thank you so much as Good always. Book. For more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head to thestreet.com.